Getting colours right in Windows XP. Now, what the way to start off uh, the idea of, of good uh, colour accuracy if we need to have something to compare to. Now, we're quite happy to send you free of charge this excellent certified accurate colour print. Now, the images here have been sourced from uh, Tony Riley. Now, Tony Riley has very kindly donated these images to us um, so that we can evaluate the accuracy of colour and monochrome printing. Now, Tony's website is www.imageplace.co.uk where you can learn more about uh, colour management. Tony's an excellent tutor. He's very, very good at, uh, at uh, uh, t t telling you the, the finer points of, of colour management. Now, with this particular image, you can download this free of charge from our website, which is marat.com forward slash print dot php. So you can get the image from our website. Now, let's just show you what we have here. We have the we have, uh, let's go back again, we've got the viewer on the side here, an excellent little graphite viewer you can buy from us for £60, does an excellent job of uh, lighting a, a print at, at the correct colour temperature of 5000 degrees Kelvin, so that's a nice little piece of kit. You've got your own uh, monitor that you see here, which is Windows XP, so that's the monitor that we have. And we can turn our attention across to the printer. Now this is the this is the Epson R two eight eight zero A three plus uh, desktop printer connected to a Lyson continuous ink system with the professional Lyson R twenty eight professional uh, uh, pigment inks, which are excellent for colour and for black and white, producing really good. Uh, really good work at about a fifth of the price of the brand ink sets of course. Now let's turn our attention back to the screen and what we do is the first stage of getting colour right is making sure that Photoshop is set up in the correct way. Now in this particular case we're using Adobe Photoshop CS so we'll open up Photoshop here it, here it comes Now the first stage is making sure that Photoshop is set up correctly. Now don't panic if you can't see the 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 actual lettering all that well. This is a fairly cheap uh, screen and maybe the camera is not picking it up as well as it might do. So we've got the file menu and adjacent to the file menu is the edit menu. And down the bottom of the edit menu we have colour settings. We click on colour settings and here we have the dialog box that tells us whether Photoshop is set up correctly. It's called Colour Settings and we can either unclick Advanced Mode or click Advanced Mode. We have Advanced Mode clicked just to make sure we've got nothing untoward uh, 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 selected without us knowing it. Now the most important element of the of Colour Settings is the RGB Working Space. So this says Working Spaces and underneath here is RGB. Now this is RGB, Adobe RGB 1998. CMYK is US Web Coated Swap version 2. This is the industry standard settings. Gray should be dot gain 20%. Spot should be dot gain 20%. Color management policies, RGB, preserve embedded profiles. CMYK, again preserve embedded profiles and the same for grey. And when we're talking about profile mismatches, we should have ask when opening, ask when pasting and ask when opening on all three selections then. Profile mismatches and, pro and missing profiles. Further down we've got the conversion engine. Now, uh, the, sorry, the conversion options. Now the conversion engine is in this case Adobe in brackets ACE, that's the correct selection there. And the one down from there is intent. So the rendering intent is supposed to be relative colorimetric. 
Underneath here is use black point compensation, which is ticked, and use dither, which also is ticked. Now we've clicked the advanced controls at the top here to expose these little two uh, items here, which both should be unclicked. So that's desaturate monitor colors by, unticked, and blend RGB colors, again, unticked. What we then do is to save these settings. So we're going to save them, and I usually like to save them as today's date, and I simply click OK, and there we go. So now we've done the right thing by Photoshop, all we've now got to do is shut down Photoshop. So at the bottom of the file menu, we click Exit. We've now got to install the printer profiles. Now printer profiles come from come with the CD that we give you with your first license uh, continuous ink system, or you can download them from the license website, or indeed you can download them from the Merit website because we are your uh, for photographic purposes we are your uh, um, we are your technical support. No matter who you've bought from, you can come to us for your technical support. So we've now got we've got five printer profiles here that we want to install into the Windows XP system. So quite simply what we do is we can right click the first profile, in this case it's for the 2880, and you can see at the top there it actually says install profile. So what could be simpler? We simply left click it and it's in. So we right click the next one and it says install profile, so we left click that one and we right click the next one and then we left click that. When I'm saying right click and left click, you know in the front of the, the PC uh, mouse you've got a right click button and then you've got a left click button which we click in there. So we right click the last one and it, it, it exposes this, this dialog box and then at the top there it says install profile and then we left click that. So they're all in. So installing printer profiles couldn't be simpler. Very, very simple. Now also with your profile disk, your profile CD, or your profiles that have come down, there'll be a full set of printer settings. So don't forget to get the printer settings that we're just about to talk about now. Now what we do is we can restart Photoshop. So let's go back to the shortcut, the, the Photoshop shortcut. We're running Photoshop Adobe Photoshop CS, and this is Windows XP. Okay. So now we've got Photoshop up. Now what we're going to do is have a standard image, which we've downloaded in this case from www.marat.com forward slash print dot php. And you can download this JPEG, and the image itself the, the, the digital uh, information corresponds to the print that we've actually uh, sent you that is certified to be accurate. Okay, so that's the, that's the print that we've sent you in the post that is certified accurate for color and density. And this is the image that you've downloaded from the website. So that's marat.com forward slash print.php. What we're now going to do is to print it on our on our printer over the side here. See, we see our printer over the side. Let's go back to the let's go back to the uh, to the to the monitor. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go file. Now, the way I normally like to do it is I go file page setup because I like to know that I'm talking to the right printer. I don't like to waste my time. So I've got A4 portrait. And within the Windows XP driver that we've got here, it always tells me that I'm talking to the right printer straight away. So Epson Stylus Photo 2880. So I, I always like to do that to make sure I'm, I'm not wasting my time. What I then do is I go File, Print with Preview. You see that? Print with Preview there. And there we have the dialog box. So that's the, the Epson printer driver. It t it's showing us already that our image, which is a it's an 8-bit RGB JPEG image, it pretty well fills the page. That's A4. Now let's go down here 